The storm dumped heavy rain on Japan's damaged nuclear plant and the water accumulated around the compound. Some of it became contaminated with radioactive substances. Managers at Fukushima Daiichi instructed workers to release it into the ocean after tests showed the radiation levels met safety standards. Uh, be careful. Do not burn yourself. Put it in the sink and just empty it. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say the rainwater had accumulated inside barriers surrounding tanks that are used to store contaminated water. They say it cleared standards set by the Nuclear Regulation Authority for release into the sea. You have your calendar in the sink and just slowly pour your water into it with all your ZD. So they let it flow out of the barriers from nine locations. Workers made an emergency transfer of rainwater that had accumulated at two other locations because they suspected it was highly radioactive. <laughs> they pumped it into an underground storage pool and will leave it there temporarily. You're going to need a bigger boat. Hundreds of tons of contaminated water builds up every day at Fukushima Daiichi and crews must store it. Heavy rain creates more work. After a storm earlier this month, plant managers had additional storage tanks built and increased patrols to stop contaminated water from escaping. Tainted rainwater flowed over barriers at the time and seeped out of an overfilled tank. The Japanese government has lent billions of dollars in compensation money to the operator of the disabled Fukushima nuclear plant. Officials now estimate it'll take decades to recover it. The government has issued about $50 billion worth of bonds to Tokyo Electric Power Company. The money is being used to compensate people who've had to evacuate their homes and farmers and fishermen who've lost their livelihoods. The government plans to recover the funds through an annual payback by TEPCO and contributions from other nuclear power companies. But the Board of Audit says if TEPCO remains in the red, it does not expect to be paid back until 2044. Even if the utility's profits improve, the funds would not be fully recovered until 2030. The Board of Audit expects the need for government assistance will increase further as demand for decontamination and real estate compensation increases. At least 13 people are known to have been killed in Japan. That's following flooding and landslides triggered by one of the most powerful storms to hit the country in many years. Typhoon Wifa brushed the Japanese coast, heading northeast past the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. Its operator, TEPCO, is pumping rainwater out of the facility to prevent further flooding. Tokyo takes a battering from high winds and driving rain. City workers battled rising water levels, the impact of one of the most powerful storms of its kind to hit this country in years. Public transport in the capital was thrown into chaos, leaving large numbers of commuters stranded. It's really scary, the wind and everything. It's incredible. There are tornadoes and mudslides. Natural disasters are just scary. I haven't seen it this bad. I was in a store and when I came out, I was really surprised. But hardest hit has been the island of Izu Oshima to the south. Most of the casualties so far have been here. The aftermath of devastation is clear to see, as well as the destruction caused by the high winds. A record 80 centimeters of rain fell here in 24 hours, provoking deadly mudslides. As torrents of rain drenched the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant, the operators pumped out tons of rainwater to try to avoid further flooding. While back in Tokyo, the authorities tried to reassure the public that everything was being done to respond to the effects of the storm. We've held a meeting of the relevant ministries and will do everything in our power to deal with this situation. Tokyo itself may have dodged the worst of this storm, but its emergency services scrambled to airlift assistance to the stricken island amid fears the toll there will rise. Nick Childs, BBC News.
has churned past Japan's Pacific coast, bringing with it heavy rains and strong winds. Typhoon Weepa killed at least 17 people, almost all of them on an island south of Tokyo. Damage on Izuoshima is widespread and dozens of residents are missing. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa reports. Typhoon Weepa left a trail of destruction on Izuoshima, one that stretches on and on. The island's residents have never seen this much rain. More than 800 millimeters fell in 24 hours. That's more than double the average rainfall for October and the heaviest downpour on record. It was too much for some areas to absorb. That hillside over there collapsed. The area behind that house is completely gone. Weepa remained powerful in the Tokyo metropolitan area too. It knocked down trees and cut power to thousands of homes. Residents woke up to howling winds and driving rain. Many found transportation disrupted just as they were heading to work. The Shinkansen bullet train was delayed and the local line was also delayed. So I was late for work. I had to cancel my business meeting this morning. The typhoon caused disruption throughout the region. Airlines canceled more than 500 flights. Rail companies reduced bullet trains and local train services. Subway operators scaled back their schedules. By the afternoon, things were back to normal on many lines, and the storm weakened later in the day as it headed north. Now, those who felt its wrath are cleaning up. The full scale of the damage is not yet known. Rescuers are looking for the missing. Officials with the Japan Meteorological Agency are warning people to be cautious. They say more landslides are possible. Mitsuko Nishikawa, NHK World, Tokyo. The Japanese government is urging the private sector to help make the country more tourist-friendly ahead of the 2020 Olympics and Paralympics in Tokyo. Oh my God. More than 300 people took part in a meeting organized by the tourism agency. They were related to the travel, hotel, and transport industries. The agency commissioner, Shigeto Kubo, said the public and private sectors should take the Olympics as a golden opportunity to cooperate. <laughs> We believe we need to make efforts, step by step, to make our country more friendly to foreign visitors. Officials from the Agency and Transport Ministry called for support in providing multilingual signboards at tourist and transport facilities. They also asked for setting up more information centers for foreign tourists and zones that allow visitors free access to Wi-Fi. The agency hopes that Tokyo's successful bid to host the Olympics will enable Japan to reach a goal of attracting 20 million foreign visitors annually. Delegates from Iran and six world powers have sat down for their second day of talks on the country's nuclear program. A senior Iranian representative has suggested his delegation is ready to give some ground on Tehran's uranium enrichment program. The enrichment itself is cannot be compromised. It's a, it's a right for Iran and we reserve, reserve this right for the Iranian people to, uh, to have an enrichment program. But the size of this program, the level of it, the scope of it is something that we can negotiate. Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Arakchi spoke to NHK before Wednesday's meeting in Geneva. He said the proposal the Iranians presented a day earlier spells out a step-by-step -step approach for each side. He called it realistic and well-balanced. He argued a breakthrough is possible if the six powers take it seriously. Western negotiators include EU foreign policy chief Catherine Ashton and envoys from the U.S., Britain, France, Russia, China and Germany. They praised the Iranian proposal but no details have been released. The Western powers believe Iranian scientists are getting closer to enriching uranium to weapons grade. Leaders in Tehran say 
Their nuclear program is for peaceful purposes, and they want U.S.-led economic sanctions eased. October 16, 2013. We're looking at the polar view from Next Lab. Satellite imaging. You know, it's, this is the storm that we watched a couple of days ago, guys, on the video talking about it, and it did. It started just off the coast of Japan, and they reported uh, some record rainfall there. They hadn't kept records in all of those areas, but one area said that uh, it was about between 20 and 30 inches in about 20 hours, guys. So that's a lot of rain, and I saw pictures that uh, tremendous landslides down the mountains with bridges and roads and homes gone, and some folks have been found dead and some missing. I don't have any reports from the Fukushima plant other than the few. I'm going to show you a couple of them. But that storm picks that radiation up, and it's distributing across the Aleutian Islands, through Canada, all across the United States. And we got you can see the cold front that's come that's right there. There's rain in it. Temperatures are dropping behind it. And just above that is that last wave of radiation. Now it's going it continues all around the globe. It gets caught up in what's called our Arctic vortex. And then as that dips in and out, it's distributedly I mean it's distributed evenly around the globe. But sometimes when you have these storms, you have these sudden uh, impacts, and Fukushima's in bad shape, guys. They, there's reports there that uh, because of that heavy rain, they had prepared to <clears throat> dump some of the uh, water catches there in the tanks and test it for radioactivity as it, to try to keep it from flooding. But it ended up to where it was coming in so fast, they had to just do straight dumps of nuclear waste straight into the ocean. And you can see here where that storm has come through. There's another one out behind it. We don't know the path of it yet. It could keep going straight, but it could come up behind it. But again, it gets trapped in this vortex, what is not blown off by these storms, and comes all around the globe, guys. Look at this. And, it, and you wonder why the most devastating thing in known human history that has ever hit the globe why we're being diverted a thousand different ways with the uh, budget deficit uh, debacle in Washington and all they're doing is they're concerned about China and China's now China is real concerned about Fukushima one of the only nations speaking out but it's because it's right there in their back door across this, just a small sea guys maybe that's why they want to come to the United States so bad but uh, th this is looking at it in visible imagery, as you can see overnight as the sun goes down there, it skirts up that east coast of Japan. And it's right off the coast, I'm talking about right where that water is being dumped, is where it's being dumped, it uh, picked up in that storm. It says, as a precaution, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant crippled by the 2011 earthquake released tons of rainwater that were being held behind protective barriers around storage tanks. Tokyo Electric Power the plant's operator said only water below an allowable level of radioactivity was released. Guys, they've lied the whole time and I'll show you the next article where some of the workers came in there. But uh, they're also saying government concern that unexpected source of contamination is ex exiting Fukushima. Radiation levels in the ocean are rising record amounts of radioactivity that's in their groundwater emergency measures now here's the other report it says uh, contaminated water dumped into the ocean nine barriers were on verge of overflowing then released into the environment with no radiation test at all so again they're, they got caught lying now here's where it gets really stupid troubling mystery complete collapse of sardine population on west coast of Canada around Vancouver Says it, it says the disappearance of the sardines in the water around B.C. As the Vancouver Sun fills in the details on the collapse. Listen, $32 million commercial fishing industry this year. says the consequences of that tiny fish could be dire. It's because it's part of the food chain. says has the uh, sardine fishery has completely collapsed, failing to catch a single fish. says... They, a senior guide and driver with Ocean Outfitter said humpbacks are normally found 7 to 10 kilometers or closer to the shore. Now they're out 2 to 3 times that when they can see them. 
says their humpbacks are telling us something has changed. They should never put mystery on these articles. Said the sardines are driving the whole system, supporting virtually everything. They are some important questions to be asked about the sardine fishery. There's no questions to be asked. There's only work to be done. It has to be stopped, if possible. Also, guys, there, the starfish epidemic, if you haven't seen it, it's moving fast. They're turning into goo, and they're just dying. Virus, bacteria, or something else entirely. Duh. Will it spread to other sea life in other parts of the West Coast? Man, I wonder how much they pay mainstream to keep things like this off the news. Maybe, you know, there are there is one major company that built all these nuclear power plants that also owns the, some of the major networks. Severe impacts. You could just pause these and read them, guys. It doesn't get a whole lot better. It's, uh, we've never faced anything like this, ever. And China saying the Pacific Ocean doesn't belong to Japan. But um, the c current ocean oceanic environment is facing significant damage. We know it, but the governments won't talk about it. Some, China is somewhat, uh, the people in Japan are trying to force their government to talk about it, but why is it being pushed down, guys? You recognize this picture with Einstein and Oppenheimer? And the phrase, I am become death, the destroyers of worlds. Guys, if you haven't seen the uh, some of the other videos that I have about the 1,200-year culling, wake up. This is Trinity. That's Oppenheimer walking down there. They had no idea of the radiation. Oppenheimer, he died in the 60s, they said, of cigarette cancer. I don't know how many people live that are walking around. They, those were not the only two. But when Oppenheimer was asked, Japan in 1960 after going over there of course after the war said what did you think about it? And he said I remember the line from the Hindu scripture the Bhagavad Gita Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him he takes on his multi arm form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds and Oppenheimer says I suppose we all thought that and this is the beginning here that was the trinity bomb guys when they started this testing but um, I'll just think about again go back to the culling videos there's a plan hidden behind the war heads up